looking at a calculation which requires a bit more thought, I'm going to set out this calculation and again I put the first number inside the box 714 and I'm dividing it by 3. So again we can see it looks the opposite way around. It's important to remember that first number is always the one going inside the box. That's the one we're starting with and dividing. So again, I remember to start here. Okay, the very first number in the box is 7. So 7 divided by 3. How many 3s are there in 7? It's not going to go exactly. By counting 3s, I get 3, 6, 9. There is no 7. So if I had 7 and I'm trying to divide it into 3s, the closest I could get is 6. That's 2 lots of 3. So 7 divided by 3 is 2, but I haven't used up all those 7. I only used up 6, so that tells me I've got one left over, what we call a remainder. So the remainder I put in front of the next number. Because really it's one of the hundreds, we're looking at hundreds here, and this is one of my hundreds is left over. And now it's moving into my tens column. Now we look at this number. So now I've not got 1 here, I've got 11. So 11 divided by 3. Well, if I keep my multiples of 3 going, my next multiple would be 12. So again I can see 11 isn't in my 3 times table. It doesn't go exactly. So how many 3's are there in 11? Now the closest I can get is 9. So that's 3 times 3 is 9. And because I had 11, that means I've got 2 left over. If I count on from 9, 10, 11, that's a remainder of 2. Now I can finish off my calculation by looking at this last number. And it's not 4 now, it's 24 because of my remainder. 24 divided by 3. Well, I know my 3 times table. I could keep going if I wasn't sure of my 3 times table, but I know that 3 times 8 is 24. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, this calculation, we just need to be careful at the beginning. So I'm going to write my first number in the box again. 385 and I'm dividing by 5. So I'm going to start off by looking at this first number again and it's a 3, so I'm saying 3 divided by 5. There's a slight problem there because if I'm counting up in fives, three isn't anywhere there. It's before we even get to the first multiple. So what that tells us is that we can't divide three by five and get any groups. So it's going to be zero. How many fives are there in three? None. We don't have enough to make a group of five. So it's zero with a remainder. Now because I started with three, I tried to make some groups of five but I couldn't. That means I've still got those three left. So I can either look at these two numbers now and say it's going to be 38 next, or if I don't want to confuse myself, I can just write my remainder, this three, up here like I would normally do and move on and say, how many fives are there in 38? So 38 divided by 5. Well, if I count up in fives, 7 times 5 would be 35. So 38 divided by 5 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. If I jot that down. But I need to get to 38. I had 38 to start with. So 35, 
36, 37, 38, the difference between those numbers is 3. So my remainder is 3. And then how many 5s are there in 35? 35 divided by 5, I've already seen, is 7. So we just need to watch out when we've got a number where it's smaller, a digit here smaller than the number that we're dividing by because it's going to mean we have zero and this number will then be the remainder because we've not used any of them left up. 